because I want to talk about apocalyptic okay. kid. Uh, it's another apocalyptic narrative. And another one? It's another one, but uh. here's the thing. I want to chat about it because not only is this a fantastic degree that people have to pick up, on the creator team alone, like really that's all that that's I needed why to I see. I grabbed it. However, I think it's important to like discuss a bigger problem that happens in the comic book reading quest. There's a, there's a meta conversation to be had here, I think. Do you want to have that conversation with me, Ryan? Today? Right now. Right now? Why don't we talk about this? Okay. Book? Okay, take a look at this. What are we reading? Little Monsters. This is from Image Comics, written by Jeff Lemire, with art by Dustin Nguyen. Dustin kills it on the art, and it's a different kind of style than you know him from, from a couple different, I don't know, like Descender, just a handful. The covers are, are like, in his more traditional, like, watercolor style here. Mm-hmm. Is not what the interiors look like. Correct. Not, not exactly. So this is one of those situations where Ryan and I had a unique meeting of the minds where you told me, I'm not too sure about this book after issue one. I was pretty vocal about disliking this book after issue one. But once you got to issue two and three... You're in. Yep. As am I. And I've said this on the show multiple times that when I am looking for comics to get into, when I am, you know, going through narratives and and diving into the reality of comics, you know, I like to read comics back to back. I don't like reading them monthly release at a time. I prefer a graphic novel. I sure. prefer three comics at once versus one. And this right here is exactly why. If you read issue one, it's not a lot, lot, not a whole lot that happens. There's not a whole lot of bite to it, if mm-hmm. you would. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vampire puns. Vampire puns. That's why they come here. Comic fam, hit the like. That's the, the reason button. you guys came here is vampire puns. However, this right here has a twist to it that will make you go, really? Hold on. Another apocalypse book? I'll double down. Another apocalypse book that follows children? Triple down. The children are vampires. And they've been living in this post-apocalyptic America for a hundred years. That's the twist. That's the twist. There is a twist. There is a twist. They're vampires. But Jeff Lemire. Sure. If Jeff Lemire makes a book, you don't judge the whole story by issue one. He's earned that from us. That's true. Right? And he's one of those writers that I am... More likely than not, going to get the book just because his name's on it. I've skipped a few, and I've regretted it in retrospect. Like, May's book is a book he did recently. I passed, okay. and I regret it. I heard it was awesome. Didn't read it. But I wasn't going to make that mistake here with Little Monsters. I'm glad we didn't, Ryan, because this story is superb. Um, we've already mentioned the creative team. Um, it's more of a black and white story as far as the art goes, with hints of red for accent. A little bit of color, too. One of the kids in this book is like a graffiti artist. Yes. So we do, actually, this kid right here, Romy? Romy? Romy. Romy? I've been calling him Romy. Okay. I I don't don't know how to pronounce it, but they are a graffiti person. (laughs) There's a better better word (laughs) for what graffiti people are called. Artist. Graffiti artist. Okay. Vandals sounds like a a bad word, (laughs) but they like to just draw on the wall. So you do get splashes of color when you see... The artwork that they do on the wall and then the blood, but, and the moon or the, whatever the sun is. Yeah. The sun, I don't know what, I assume that, that's the, that's gotta vampires. be the moon because they're vampires. They're yeah. They can't of, come out in the sun. That's right. Whatever that ball in the sky is, is reddish orange. The detail work, the yep. negative space is exactly what you want to see. You know, this is a dreary, is that the right word? Dreary? Dreary? Dreary. Dreary? Dreary works, too, because it's weary as well. You do it's get a little a, weird. You do get, oh, I was get that, too. I was going to say weary. You do get the sense that, like, these are these kids are tired. That's right. You know? They've been around for a long time. They're you know, getting bored, which is kind of why this first issue feels a little boring on its own. That's right. You know, we get introduced to a handful of children, um, and the interesting thing that takes place is that issue one sets up the psychological aspect of this, uh, of, of the character's particular experience in time. Having lived 100 years... And starting to get extremely bored. It's kind of like Stillwater. Like they're stuck as kids for all this time too. They're not growing up. These are like permanent children who happen to be vampires. We have Lucas who plays a lot of music, for example. He's playing guitar and he is writing songs constantly. And he gets asked by one of his other vampire you know, siblings, we can call them for, for, for as far as we know in this story. It's hard to know their names also, by the way. 
Yeah. Like I can't I can't remember what her name is, for example. They'll tell us in a few pages. I'm sure. But right now, I don't know her name. I don't remember her name. They all blend together at this point still. She asks Lucas, do you ever just accidentally write a new song, but realize that it's actually a song you've already written? It, it starts to make you think, okay, you have children's minds, right? Like you're dealing with some someone who is be fragile, you know, someone inexperienced, someone who the world is their oyster, right? But what if they're the only ones around? What if they're going to live forever? What if a hundred years goes by? These children, they're going to experience things over and over again to a point where life gets dull. And that's what he's exp expressing. He used to write his songs down in a book. He used to perform them. But now the only thing that's really exciting is to do it fresh live. And you really get a peek at their psyche here, you know, how tormented these individuals are because they're a group of vampires in a world where there aren't humans left. We don't know why. We get a, we'll get a little taste of why, but we're going to let you guys sure. dive into that yourselves when you inevitably get this book because it picks up quick. There's three issues out at this point right now, so it's still relatively recent. There's not a lot of information about why exactly there are no people in this world. We just get this roving band of vampire kids who are eating rats. True. Because there's no people. There's no people. They don't even really know what it's like to have the taste of human blood, which is really what the vampire life is all about, right? It's supposed to give you that energy. It's supposed to give you that that agility that vampires are known to have. They, they have a lot of the same vampire traits. However, in this world they're with no humans, you got to eat something. So clearly they're eating what they can. They can eat rats. Even these boys down here, these twin boys who are also vampires. All these kids are vampires. Right. They're like the kids who I think back when I was younger and my mom would say, Hey, yeah, go have fun. But you know that those kids, their parents let them do a little more. Those are than the bad like. kids. Not necessarily bad, but the ones that are a little bit more rambunctious. They're more likely sure. to jump off of something. You know, they're more likely to get, get dirty or whatever, you know, play in the mud or what, what have you. It's kind of like, you know, the Phil and Lil type of I kids here. I was literally just thinking Phil and Lil, by the Whoa, way. Whoa, Fire yeah. Ryan. You're reading my mind? I'm reading like, yeah. it. Maybe we both have some type of, like, psychic connection. I don't mm -hmm. know. But these kids are Phil jumping off of stuff, mm -hmm. and one of them breaks their arm. And he says, oh, damn, this is going to take a whole day to heal. So clearly we have a lot of the same vampire traits. You know, this has very much been done before. You know, the lore is all the same. However, the twist that they are the last ones on Earth, supposedly, is the big reveal that makes this so intriguing. And talking with you before we went live kind of changed my mind on this comic even more because you pointed out specifically how this book gets into their psyche and what it is like being, what it must be like being stuck in these bodies in this world with no people and only each other to keep yourselves entertained and what that does to your brain over time. It's not what you'd expect hearing that it's a vampire book. This is definitely, we just talked about what's the furthest place from here recently. That clip actually just went live like today on YouTube. So it's pretty appropriate on our, on our channel. But this book reminds me a lot of that, like a group of child friends wandering around in an apocalypse. However, there's vampires. It's a weird twist. We end um, issue one. We're not going to give you too much more of a spoiler here, but we want to leave you with, um, with some meat on the bone. The discovery of a human that they haven't encountered. Like in general, they haven't encountered humans at all for quite a long time. But clearly there is a human that gets discovered in this issue. And these children are going to taste blood for the first time. They're waiting on someone to return. Now, that person, we're not going to show who they are. We have ideas of who, they're, who they could be. But there is a vampire, a elite vampire, a, a lord of the vampires, a king of the vampires, possibly Dracula. Who knows? But there's someone that they're waiting on to return. But it's been such a long better not time. Be, I would be really bummed out if it was actually Dracula. Like, it better be just be a vampire guy. Just like, someone fresh. Not Dracula. Count Dracula would send this book in a completely different direction. <laughs> Count Dracula, Ryan right. says. Comic fam, we want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the apocalypse themes that have been so prevalent in comic books? I feel like every time there can't be something fresh, something new. I get surprised. I think before we go on this one book, I think the overall message needs to be 
you, if you're reading a book monthly, you need to give it more than one issue. Oh, absolutely. I almost made the mistake of dropping this book out of like rage, rage quitting this book after being disappointed with the first issue. And I think over time it has been getting better. We're going to touch on this a little bit in another review, but sometimes when we get rec- when we get asked for recommendations, for example, hey, I want to read a Batman book. I want to read a Spider-Man book. The first thing that I go to isn't necessarily like the latest type of uh, uh, no. of story that I can pick pick off the wall or point to. It's always going the writer slash artist direction first. Let's get him some some Scott Snyder. Sure. Right. That makes that makes that's usually more dependable than like like Jeff Lemire, for example, like giving them a writer that, you know, can deliver a good story versus here's Batman. You like Batman. Here's Batman. There we go. Comic fam. We want to know your thoughts. Are you picking up little monsters? Are you going to? I think you should. You're going to be excited about it. At least get the trade. At least get the trade. Um, But they're on issue three right now. And it's got me all in. Book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas, comic fan, unless you're really gunning for some Jack Kirby goodness. $75 cover price on this, don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 